and welcome back to the Faster Way podcast. I am thrilled to be here today with Dr. Agan, and we are going to talk about some hot topics. <laughs> we are going to talk about Ozempic and weight loss shots in general. We are going to talk about the American Heart Association study. And if you're not watching on YouTube, I'm doing air quotes that recently came out and unfortunately has gained some virality and traction across multiple media outlets that is literally stating 91% of people who do intermittent fasting have a higher risk of heart disease. Literally death from heart disease is what it's saying. And uh, Dr. Egan, you can't see him, but he's, he's shaking his head right now. So, so we're going to address this and we're going to talk about supplements as well. I want to dive in and talk about NAD, a few other supplements that are gaining popularity some that I personally am enjoying. Uh, before we dive into the hot topics, the juicy stuff, I want to hear when and why, Dr. Egan, you entered the wellness industry. Tell us a little bit about that story. Uh, yeah, it was it was a pretty smooth transition for me. I was a college athlete, so always into fitness and nutrition and, and health in general. Uh, obviously, i made some bad decisions in college, but, uh, <laughs> overall that transition, as I, yeah, <laughs> as I got into medicine, um, it, you know, I wanted to, I, I wanted to carry on obviously lifestyle into what I practice. But when you get into residency in family medicine, you find out that there's no time, there's no education on any of this. And so, um, what I did was quickly realize that I didn't want to be in medicine. And so right out of residency, I went straight into being my own boss, owning my own practice wow. uh, and just knew I was going to do things my way or I was just going to get out of medicine. And I just happened to weather the storm because when I got into functional medicine, it was just starting in 2000. And so, um, you know, concierge medicine was really a new thing. Yours MDVIP was coming on the scene at the same time, kind of brought concierge medicine out, but uh, just early in the game. And so I had to be patient until people started to realize, all right, there's some reason and uh, some under, you know, just so they understood that there was some, some um, benefits to non-traditional philosophies. Yeah. Yeah. 2000 was early, oh, yeah. early yeah. days for functional medicine yeah. in the U.S. Now you go to Brazil, oh, yeah. functional medicine, root cause medicine is medicine. Yeah. I mean, that is what they do. In fact, our new wellness director is an MP from Brazil and she works for a functional medicine clinic here. Her name is Alex. She is wonderful, but she'll say, when I, when I was in Brazil, that is medicine. She actually recently yeah. had a health issue. She went to Brazil to receive the right diagnosis she had been misdiagnosed here for actually months, uh, and, and we'll share about that later, but I so appreciate your willingness to be patient, your willingness to say, hey, you know, I'm not going to stay with the traditional route because I feel that's not aligned with my values and it's not getting to the root cause. You then kind of put your foot down and said, even though I'm looked at probably as a little quirky, a little oh. weird, I'm getting criticism, yeah. I'm going to stay the course. So good for you. I want to acknowledge you for that. Not everyone understands how much of a challenge that would have been. Right. It would have been a major massive challenge. And hopefully now you're kind of enjoying the momentum that oh, is yeah. around functional and alternative medicine. Yep. Yeah. Longevity medicine now is so trendy and, and we're kind of moving more that way, biohacking, longevity. So let's dive into a discussion on NAD. Mm -hmm. I personally do NAD shots every day. I used to do NAD IVs once a week. Now that was a big time commitment and yeah. also painful. I, I, so <laughs> I will tell, so we're going to define NAD but listen these these NAD IVs it would take me about an hour and 45 minutes to get through. It takes some other people 3 4 hours to get through yeah. because your whole body is on fire. For some people, your chest kind of has a little bit of pressure. Sometimes you got some digestive, you know, <laughs> kind of pressure too. I would actually, this is funny. When I was doing my NED IVs, I'd walk the whole time. 
I just walked the whole time That's because if idea. I was in movement, I'd be worried more about kind of moving and even like squatting and walking and lunging versus just laying there and, and, you know, thinking about kind of the discomfort. So what is NAD? Define it for our listeners. So NAD is, is called nicotinic adenine dinucleotide and it's pretty much, uh, you know, out of the vitamin based energy, uh, subst- uh subst- substrates, NAD is the most important one. It's pretty much the the main energy producer for our bodies and it's uh the you know uh, it's it's essential for all living cells it's essential for everybody and yeah. uh and so by we can't and as as you know just like everything in life as we start to age our nad levels start to drop and uh and as you start to have more disease you start having uh, increasing age, you start to, you know, start to get into this NED deficiency syndrome, whereas you're now, um, you know, the simple way to look at health is energy abundance or energy deficit. Yeah. And so if you're a deficient in NED, forget about it, because you're going to be using it up just on your, your basic uh, 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 activities of daily living and autonomic functions for your body, and you have nothing left to use for yourself. And yeah. so that's when you start tapping into all these different resources that your body doesn't want to give up, and you put yourself into a, a pickle, and then that's when disease and symptomology starts to happen. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, I tell everybody, you know, you know, there's, it, it's not the cheapest. Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, injection or, or, or way to supplement, but there are ways for inexpensively to use niacin or niacinamide or nicotin, uh, 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 nicotinic uh, riboside. Other supplements you can use, but there's nothing that's going to bypass an injection. You yeah. know, when you can get past the the GI component of it, yes, um, it's it's pretty magnificent. I did the IVs for a lot. I back, I do the injections as well. Yeah, yeah. I use the baby needles and a baby dose. Oh, if yeah. I go more than 20 to 25 milliliters, I suppose it is. Well, yeah, it's probably one to one. So 20, yeah. 20 to 25 milliliters would be 20 to 25 milligrams. And yes. that, that 50 milligram is kind of the point where if you go over that, oh. just like an IV, you, you know, we, we, you're feeling yeah, it in the digestive part of it. It's, but it's really stomach, uh, chest and head. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Once I get over that little kind of burning though, holy cow, my energy spikes. I feel like superwoman. This is something, again, I've been doing for a couple of years. So I'm glad that we spoke about it. And when I have my blood work done by my concierge doctor in Miami, he's like, you are aging in reverse. He's like, he's like, you're the only patient I have who's literally like beating me on all the numbers. Uh, He's a year older than me. So I always kind of joke with him about it, but I do feel that NAD is in part responsible for my incredible energy this year. I've had better energy in 2024 than I've had in 12 years. Uh, And so I'm I'm just thrilled with the benefits. Definitely guys do some research on what we're talking about. You're right. It is a little bit more pricey, Mm. but energy for me is, is priceless because I got five kids. I'm running a big company. I'm working on building the next billion dollar brand in the nutrition and fitness category. Like I need the energy guys. I'm going 120 miles per hour every day. Uh, I love that you do the injections every day as well, though. That's great. Yep. Speaking of injections, speaking of shots, uh, here's the deal. So I've done one, two, maybe three, four interviews regarding weight loss shots. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of nuance around this topic. Uh, recently, I posted on social media, and I'll, I'll share why I posted, uh, simply to uh, uh articulate, communicate some of these symptoms, some of the side effects that I'm hearing from clients regarding specifically Ozempic. Right. So, so just real quick for our listeners, in the weight loss category, there are many different options for medications, okay? We've got the semi-glutides, Ozempic, in addition to Manjaro, well, yeah. no, no. Um, in addition to Wagovi. Wagovi, we have the trizepatide. We have a lot of different brand names. I've shared this on the podcast in the past. In 2023, people thought the biggest story was ChatGPT. The people thought the biggest story was OpenAI. Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. Ozempic, okay, was the biggest story in 2023. Ozempic specifically is one of the fastest growing companies in the world. You guys, in the world, Oprah recently stepped down from the board, stepped down from uh, Weight Watchers. She had been an owner. 
a few months ago, she came out and said, oh, you do a weight loss shot, that's a shortcut. Then it comes out, she's actually doing the weight loss shots. Then it comes out, she's leaving Weight Watchers altogether. And Weight Watchers had recently bought a company that could prescribe Ozemi. So it was just this huge PR mess. Mm -hmm. Then a couple days ago, she does a special specifically regarding Ozempic to say we shouldn't uh, be shaming or blaming people for obesity because it's not their fault. It's the fault of, you know, the world. So, so, you know, again, lots of thoughts here, lots of nuance. I posted on Instagram and I communicated some of the side effects that my clients are articulating to me. I've had 400, 5,000 clients go through Fastway. I have 4,700 coaches. We have tens of thousands of active clients right now, close to 60,000. And I receive messages day after day after day after day man, I got to tell you, I, you know, I tried Ozempic because my doctor asked me to, and, and here's what happened. I, you know, was in the hospital. My, my husband tried it. He now has pancreatitis. I got this, I got that. And I would say I have about a 50, 50 split specifically for Ozempic, 50% life-changing, 50% I just got out of the hospital for this thing. Yeah, those I, this good and statistics. that. <laughs> Not good statistics. I've never in my life 50%, 50, 50. And it's funny because on the post, on my Instagram post, it was a 50, 50 split. I had 50% of people say, I tried, you know, weight loss shots, best thing I ever did. Now, most of those, and I'm going to just say this, most of the people that said that, it was not Ozempic. Okay, right. I want to be clear with you guys. It was Manjaro. It was trisipatide. It was it was something else. Okay, most of the people who had a good experience. But this is, and you know, I'm going to stop talking and let you speak. My biggest concern, and the reason I posted, is because a very very close friend of mine called me when I was at the office and said, "I just want you to know, I did 16 weeks of Ozempic specifically. It was recommended to be my my IV guy." Not a, not a doctor, right. my IV guy, okay? I wanted to lose 10, 15 pounds. It was recommended to be my, let me tell you everything that I experienced. I'm feeling and looking older. I lost weight slower than when I was following a healthy diet and working out. I lost my endurance. My hair is falling out. I have no appetite now that I'm trying to work out and I can't get the fuel necessary to do cardio. I did lose muscle. And this is what, and there's just, I just want to call you and tell you so that you can share. And that's why I posted it because it was literally that day. I'm like, I got to, because I would be negligent not to communicate this to my clients specifically for Ozempic. In my opinion, it's important to, if I'm having a 50-50 split, great results, terrible side effects. I want people to be informed because they're going to their IV guy who's saying, oh, you got 15 pounds to lose, do this. So, so let's dive in and let's talk a little bit about the nuance because again, I want to have a balanced discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whatever, everything you're saying is spot on. Yeah. It was exactly my opinion on it. Um, you, you know, I always say that, you know, I, I think that they can be a shortcut for people, but you're never getting out of the way, getting the, 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 uh, eating strategy out of the way. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, the way I approach it for people, um, is that if they want to try it, they're going to do it our way and they're going to have an eating strategy. Yeah. Um, because there's, there's no way you're going to get around understanding and having a relationship and an appreciation for why we are eating and what we're eating. Right. And if you don't understand that, you're going to fail like any other diet. Right. So th in the way this is being presented to the community, that it is a magic pill mm -hmm. and there are doctors now that are coming out, which I don't agree with saying that this is something that we should tell these people that they can stay on it for the rest of their lives. Mm. That makes no sense in the wellness community for, uh, it just, I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so, so in, in the side effects, I agree. I think that most of the people that say that it's just a beautiful thing are people that are still using it. They haven't tried to get off of it yet. Mm. And if you're, if you want to stay on a medicine for the rest of your life, you can, but it's going to age you. Yeah. Um, there, there's no way you're going to stay on that medicine and learn and have a relationship with food that is going to put you in a position where you can maintain health and mm -hmm. decrease uh, um, advanced aging. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, let me clarify some of the people who for me are calling and saying, you know, this has not been successful. It, did give me negative side effects. I am looking and feeling older. I, I do wanna clarify and say most of them are not eating healthy and exercising properly alongside taking the medication. Okay? Most of them don't. Most of them don't. I had a gal at my beach club in Costa Rica come up to me. She's a client. She said, oh my goodness, my friends are doing you know, Ozempic and they are still drinking. 
they're still eating cheeseburgers and hot dogs and cookies and, and this and that. And they are miserable and they're not seeing results. And that for me is the main problem because like you said, there's no substitute for a healthy lifestyle from the standpoint of nutrition and fitness. And I want to be sure that everyone listening understands I am not sitting here to judge. I will not strategy shame. However, every single person listening, every single person should be eating healthy, focusing on whole foods and moving their body. Okay, every single person. I also firmly believe, and we'll transition into this in a few minutes, every one of you should be fasting at minimum 12 hours, at minimum 12 hours, okay? The big problem that I have with Ozempic specifically, again, there's, you know, lots of, go back to the interview with Dr. Lisa Koch. We spoke about the uh, the nuance. She discussed kind of how she prescribes, and I, uh, I'm actually a fan and I approve and, appreciate how she prescribes, but every single person needs to be at minimum living a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dr. Lisa coach, she said, okay, when someone comes to me and they've tried a healthy lifestyle, they've tried eating healthy, they've tried working out and it's still not moving the needle and they've been committed for a long period of time. There are some levers that we can pull and Mm -hmm. some of them include peptides. But what I do is she says, I put everybody in a, a bod pod. I do a, a body scan with everyone, whether it's a DEXA, can, DEXA scan. I look at their current lean mm-hmm. muscle. I very slowly introduce these peptides. I then continue to reassess their muscle. I have them focus on protein. I'm sure that they're burning fat while simultaneously gaining that muscle. But again, most people prescribing this are not doing that because they're not educated. Almost none. Almost yeah, none. It's, it's almost, almost none. none. We have to be honest. None. It's almost none. <laughs> I do just want to quickly, since we're here, address one or two of the comments that I received, which was really disappointing. I, I had you know one or two uh, individuals chime in and they'd say, well, I'm a functional medicine MP. I am a medical doctor and you need to leave the opinions to us. You need to leave. I'm a medical doctor and you need to leave the opinion to me. Excuse me. I'm a wellness professional who's worked with nearly half a million clients. (laughs) I would be negligent not to discuss something that impacts the health and wellness of my client that would decrease their muscle mass that would, uh, increase their chance of pancreas. Why wouldn't I discuss that? And it's the shade, which is just, and then you look at the profile and they got 300 followers. I'm like, yeah. So the hundred clients that you've worked with over the past year versus the clinically proven program that I'm doing with 400,000 clients, who has a little bit more experience, you know, and, and that's not what it's about. And yours but, is science-based too. It's clinically proven yeah, science. You got to realize that. <laughs> you, so wanna, you, you can't oh, argue it. <laughs> I shouldn't discuss something yeah. that is impacting the weight loss category of which I am a thought leader. And uh, like it, it's that yeah. shade to me. And I just, I don't respond or I very respectfully respond, of course. Mm. Um, but yes, I <clears throat> am concerned regarding the people prescribing Ozempic who don't, do not have an understanding regarding nutrition and fitness and who are not empowering their patients to live a healthy lifestyle. And these patients are losing muscle. And guys, listen, muscle is the key to longevity. It is the key. No doubt. It's the absolute key. And so this is what I want you guys to hear from me. But are we accepting people with open arms who are already on Ozempic, on Wagovi, on Mandaro, one million percent, because guess what? Everyone who is on these medications needs a good fitness program Mm -hmm. and needs a good meal plan and needs to understand how to eat enough to fuel their body properly. So I, I want to be very clear. This is not strategy shaming. It is saying there's a right way and there's a wrong way. That's exactly it. Yes. Yes. So let's discuss Intermittent fasting, I I just want to hear kind of your opinion on fasting first, and then we'll talk about this American Heart Association, again, air quotes, study that's going viral on social media 
Do you fast? What are your thoughts on fasting? Uh, yes, I fast. I've been doing intermittent fasting for around 13 years oh, now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That yes. was early too. Yeah, yeah. You do everything a little early. You're like, you were doing it when it was weird. Yeah. It, it, well, <laughs> Same. It, yeah. And, 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 and the truth is, is that, you, you know, I, I mean, I've honestly, I've written probably five eating programs Yes. and there's nothing that's been more impactful than intermittent fasting. Oh, I mean, say that again. Yeah, no, say nothing, that again. Nothing by, I mean, without and, and everybody in my office knows that's all I talk about. People probably hate even caught they, Oh, Brent's coming over. Does he, oh, he's going to talk about his intermittent fasting. So and, and this is, again, is this, there, there's science to support it. I mean, you talk about NAD, intermittent fasting is tied to NAD production. Yes. You know, these, the, all of these things, um, put yourself into a position of better health. And so, uh, you know, you mentioning about the Ozempic, there are right ways to use these injections. And yeah. there are some people that um, that just needed a break from the the, the, the whole psychology of, of food yeah. and the inability to have a relationship with food. And it was it's very um, draining for them mentally. And right. so, but then as soon as they get over that hump, they have to have they have to have a meal plan. They have to have exercise worked right. in. They got to regimen their their lifestyle. And so intermittent fasting is the easy one because again, statistically, I've watched in all my observation of clinical trials, people do the best on intermittent fasting. I've had them try every diet. There's and, and when people come in, you know, and tell me about their the, the small percentage of people that are successful on carnivore, almost none. Um, it, does it work for them? Yeah, but almost nobody can do it. Yeah. And then you look at all these other eating strategies and it comes down to the one that has the, the most science support is intermittent fasting or any type of fasting. And the one that's the easiest to become a, a part of your lifestyle for long-term success is intermittent fasting. Yeah. And so I, I try to push everybody into it, but the ones that are successful not on it, I let them do what they're doing, but I make sure that they're doing it correctly. Yes. Okay. You are making my day. And I have to say, we scheduled this interview before the article yeah. went viral on social That's media. True. And we did not compare notes ahead of time. That's I didn't true. know you were coming in as a physician, as a doctor with this perspective on intermittent fasting and everything happens for a reason. That's you know, right. the timing is fantastic, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stating that. Mm -hmm. So let's break down this study just a little bit. Yeah. It was uh, presented or it will be presented soon by the American Heart Association, uh, which, by the way, you guys have heard me talk about our Faster Way clinical trial. So our Faster Way experimental group followed our six-week program, intermittent fasting, carb cycling, tracking macros, whole food nutrition, 30-minute workouts. And we were compared against a group, a control group who followed the American Heart Association recommendations. These people, these individuals were trying to live healthy right. okay, for six weeks. They were, try they were following the food guide, pyramid, my plate, and, and here's the results. Our clients in six weeks decreased cholesterol, burned visceral fat, gained muscle, decreased bioage by three years in six weeks. The control group, American Heart Association group, gained increased cholesterol, did not increase muscle, gained weight, did not impact their bio age. They, they actually had all of the opposite effects that you would want to have if you're following a healthy lifestyle. And it was during the new year too, when they're most motivated. Like <laughs> That's why we have an obesity epidemic. That's right. And it's, yeah. So here's just to, to, just to set this up. So the article that is going viral is that intermittent fasting increases risk of cardiovascular disease and death by 91%. Okay, this is the title. This is the headline on People, on Bloomberg. And I'm receiving messages from so many of you. I have clients, I have coaches, I have friends. I've, I've, I'm receiving messages. Can you please speak to this? I'm in the faster way. I'm 76. I've been in the program for five years. I'm nervous, da, da, da. So we just, I didn't wake up today wanting to have to deal with this, right. Brent, because it's just <laughs> such nonsense, yes, but I know you guys are worried about it. Yeah. So, so first and foremost, it's American Heart Society, right. American Heart Association. Second, let's just talk a little bit about how they run these studies. I mean, it's not even a legitimate study. No, in, in, and I don't even like breaking down studies. I did that in residency. And yeah. as soon as I started understanding what was going on uh, with, with health and wellness, I stopped even looking at these studies because, uh, first of all, these are these studies are done. I don't care if it's 
400,000 people or 200,000 people, these people are all not you. Yeah. And, uh, and so when we look at the, the, the population that they're pulling these 400,000 people from, they're already unhealthy. Yeah. We know statistically that they're not healthy. Yeah. And so they would have to break down all of these people's health and habits, how many medicines are on, how many yeah. comorbidities they have yeah. to really even try to come out with a correlation between intermittent fasting. But And it was um, 5,000 people. I have to. Oh, it was 5,000? I'm going to pull up my phone. Oh, it was wow. 5,000 people. I'm going to go <laughs> to a little summary of this. And again, I, I you guys can't see me because you're not on YouTube, but I just keep, I'm like doing the air quotes like it's my day job. Um, so it was 5,000 people. They did a survey. Yeah, and this article I'm looking at, the news is everywhere in my social news feeds this morning. Popular fad diet is apparently lethal, scientific wow. research says. Specifically, a study found that calorie restriction, also known as intermittent fasting, has a 91% higher risk of death due to cardiovascular disease, except scientific research doesn't say that. And not only should you not be worried about this study, you shouldn't be wasting brain glucose even thinking about it, okay? They surveyed 5,000 people, never asked what type of food they were having. It oh, was this was just, a survey? It was a it was nutritional, nutrition examination survey. 5,000 people a year about eating and dietary habits. Data was linked by the researchers to a separate database of deaths. Both the survey and the database of deaths are administered by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. But it's not even a published study yet. Right. It's just a summary that the American Heart Association is going to be sharing at a meeting, probably, Dr. Agan, to uh, prove their point that we should have Cheerios for dinner. Yeah, because that's, 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 you know. That's right. That's what they, that's what there's on their, uh, on their uh, food pyramid. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's what they did was look for people who only ate for a short period of time during the day, uh, but didn't look gosh. at what they're eating. I mean, this is just nuts. Not any how many calories, not their breakdown of their macros, <laughs> just did a survey and came out oh with that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's that's very um, troublesome because, you, you know, when you look at the our society as an overall, as far as health and, and you know, disease, um, you know, to scare anybody from this type of opportunity, the opportunity, and, and obviously both of our minds that we yep. find out, yep. um, that, you know, that's very, that's very dangerous to, to be put out that information when we're struggling with disease as we, as we are. Dangerous. It is dangerous. Yeah. That is my biggest frustration yeah. for People Magazine, for the Wall Street Journal, I'm not sure if they reported on it, for Bloomberg to put this out with the clickbait title scares people away yeah. from doing something that we know is scientifically proven to to help to improve their health, to increase immune system, uh, autophagy, healing, the whole nine. And what's the ulterior motive? I mean, why is the American Heart Association even... It's because, again, they want to promote Cheerios for breakfast well, and if, for dinner and if, for lunch. If you look at you know, between Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers, American yeah. Heart Association, you talk about all these associations that are providing supposedly good information for our consumers. They've had plenty of time to make a dent in disease and obesity. Yeah. But instead, it's all on the rise. Right. So they they, they had their chances. And yeah. so now here they go. They come out with another scare tactic. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't understand why, because yeah. um, they have to be able to look at the statistics like we do yeah. and see that disease and obesity is on the rise. And, and so whatever they're telling is not working. Whatever they're prescribing to their doctors to prescribe to the patients is not working. And so to shame or put any sort of... Um, dangers onto intermittent fasting is is something that not only should you disregard but you should go the opposite because if you the the population that is following that is the sick population so if you want to stay healthy and you want to actually get to your goals you're going to have to go against the grain the obesity epidemic is what's killing people oh yeah not fasting it's the obesity epidemic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the obesity epidemic. Uh, funny that you mentioned Jenny Craig. So I was under the impression that Jenny Craig had gone bankrupt several months ago. It looks like someone must have purchased the brand mm -hmm. rights because just a couple few weeks ago, I saw a Facebook ad for Jenny Craig with a picture of a chocolate lava cake that said, finally, the secret to weight loss, dot, 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 
intermittent fasting. Yeah, they both Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers picked it up. Which is funny because a couple of years ago, I had the former CEO of Jenny Craig in my office and he was grilling me with questions related to intermittent fasting. And I'm a very generous health and wellness professional. Mm. If I know something's going to work and I feel that someone has a platform to do good, I will share. I will share. I will share. I was very full day meeting. I was very generous with my knowledge. Uh, And now- They're literally, you know, which it's even more confusing that Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, and some of these other big companies, 13 years later, after you and I started doing intermittent fasting, are talking about, and then still the American Heart Association's bashing. It's just, it's clickbait. You guys have just, you know, unfortunately, you just cannot trust the media, but also, unfortunately, many people do. And so I didn't even sleep good last night, you know, woke up tired and now I have to deal with this. Yeah. You know, it, it's just it it's it's a it's very frustrating. But that is why I do what I do. I do wake up every morning and I grind because there is so much misinformation yeah. in the marketplace related to nutrition and fitness. Now we have the Ozempic effect taking place with people who don't have the credentials and really the knowledge to be prescribing this properly. Notice I use the word properly right. for their patients. And then we have patients who are just suffering. And it's another thing now that they're trying and, and failing and suffering. And so my heart goes out to people because it's not their fault if their eye IV guy says, hey, try this. Within two weeks is bumping them up to the highest dose. They can hardly eat. They're losing their hair. You know, it's just, yeah. it. Re- there's such a big task ahead of me, ahead of you. And we're going to continue to do what we can to spread the word about effective strategies like intermittent fasting that we know are science-backed and will genuinely help our clients in the marketplace. Yeah. And, and I love the fact that, you know, the other part of, you, you mentioned carb cycling and, 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 you know, you even get some misinformation on fasting just because of the, the, the whole muscle loss, you yes. can't fast and Ugh. you nailed it with carb cycling. So when, when done right, there's just no better tool, just hands down. There's just no better tool. Um, I, I'm proof of it. You know, I, I've told my clients, I say, you know, when I've always been healthy, but I haven't been as healthy as I was since I started intermittent fasting. And, and, and when you when you can put it all together and you're just mentioning about the shots, it's not shaming them. There is a right way to do it. There yes. are people that need it yep. potentially and could benefit from it, but you have to realize the 50% of people that are, are getting side effects is in. So just make sure that if you're gonna do it, you have to have you have to have an eating strategy. You have yes. to have exercise. You have to have your lifestyle in place. Um, if it's not at the beginning, it has to be the exit strategy from the drug yes. so that it's in place. Um, but just find someone that's doing it the right way. If yeah. you have 10 pounds to lose, you probably don't need to spend that type of money right. on an injection. You know, you can. You, you need to find someone that can figure out what's going on yes. uh, internally. Oh my goodness. Dr. Agan, thank you so much. This has been such an inspiring conversation. I'm energized. I'm fired up. I know everyone listening is as well. We spoke about those hot topics. (laughs) We just went there and uh, we truly appreciate you. Where can we find you online? Uh, I, we, my website's prior to umd.com. Um, you know, we have a clinic here and, and it's, uh, I'm pretty quiet. <laughs> we are neighbors yeah, 13 we are minutes neighbors. away, yes. which is great. Yeah. We'll have to have you back for sure. Perfect. Thanks again. Thank you. Hope everybody has a great day. Bye. See you later. Bye.